Not this time. My brother's going solo today. So, I'll be watching with you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everybody's ready because the show is about to begin. The great magician Linny has prepared a spectacular show for us all tonight, concluding with an all-new grand finale audience has ever seen before. Wow! A new trick! Thank you all so much for coming. Now, prepare to join me on a journey through the mystic miraculous. <sighs> Exciting stuff, isn't it? Yes, it's just... <laughs> reminds me of him. No wonder. Caesar was a famous magician, too. So, how did you two first meet? Hmm? Well, I was out on the street once, and I saw him. Caesar had this amazing way of bringing them into a world. And somehow, I felt drawn to him too. So, he went up and for me. Aww, that sounds so romantic. What trick did he do? It was with a flower. He took it in his hand. It magically appeared on. Happy that day. No one had ever given me a flower before that. So uh, really? Lenny's done that one before. Is that right? Then I suppose he's a romantic at heart. So let's treasure the time. After all, you know. Be gone. That's right. Um, Paimon doesn't really know how to comfort you, but at the very end, no one's going to be intimidating you from now on. At last. Right. Yes, you can breathe easy now, Phantom Weasel. See? Even Lynette's is... Wait, what? Weasel! Lorenzo escaped? Where is he? Uh, what do you mean, Phantom Weasel? As Linny once said, a performer's job is to commit fully to the and put on a flawless performance for their audience. But once the bag of tricks is empty and the curtain falls, it's... This person with no more cards... It's been ten years, Gemma. Aren't you tired of the Grieving Widow Act? I think it's time to put an end to it. What are you... Uh, Paimon doesn't like this... Tra Traveler, Paimon doesn't like where this is... Come on, say something! Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all enjoying the performance so far. There will be a... After which Linny will perform the most electrifying act of tonight's show, the one we've all been waiting for. The final performance will take place outside of the Opera House. Please make your way outside in a calm and orderly fashion. The Phantom Weasel never did like public places. <laughs> Don't worry. Quiet. Let's talk more. Dear me, this is awkward, isn't it? And unfortunately, I'm all out of gadgets, so I'm afraid I don't have any tricks to light up the moon. This is a big mistake for a magician to make, but thankfully, backup plan. Now, who wants to hear a story? That's right. Being the real phantom weasel among going on all in good time magicians are good at guessing what people are thinking i know the questions you want to ask and as the story i'm about to tell might answer a few of them really well then let's hear it paimon's dying of curiosity 
Let's go back to the very beginning. Eight ago, when the Phantom Weasel was terrorizing the Court of Fontaine, she never missed a time from her thieving hands. As her grew, the red of the police and her opportunities to act became ever fewer. Every day, she ran the risk of being exposed for who she was. Of course, she could not. Before long, she found her ticket to freedom. She would create a scapegoat, a false weasel, to close the chapter on her behalf. After weighing her options, she set her sights on a renowned man, Caesar. After all, captured enough popularity. So, so then what? Master Deceiver, she earned Caesar's trust. Now all that remained was to find him for her countless crime. As she was considering how to make her move, she noticed Caesar's aggrieved people. Maybe I don't need to get my hands dirty after all. At her, Lorenzo played with Caesar's magic box, causing him to fall to his death. Afterwards, Lorenzo seized his master's property, and the weasel set about tarnishing Caesar's reputation. Two co-conspirators committed the perfect crime. <laughs> I've got to hand it to you. You're both exceptional storytellers. It's enough to make even me wonder whether there was really another mastermind behind all this. But I just have one question. To think that I am the villain in this. I brought this on, Linny. Something that Lorenzo said. Don't worry, Lorenzo said nothing at all. But I. Weasel, and in fact, my investigation only made me more certain of that. He was too forthcoming with his confession, as if there was something to hide. How disappointing. So you'd sooner trust Lorenzo than me? Thread of evidence? A magician is an expert playing the audience to get the result they want. And I have no doubt that you are equally talented in this regard. With a little help from Lorenzo, you put on a very convincing performance. The lovesick fiancé, whose devotion to her betrothed unshakable even of violence. Caesar was maligned and hated by all for ten years, but you? Everyone sympathized with your plight. I suspect for one second that the lovely young lady always seen weeping in Caesar's life was actually the mastermind behind his demise. Not that poor lady. Perish the thought. So you Yes. Hmm. Maybe Gemma herself could enlighten. Well, if you're so confident in your version of events, then I think the answer should be obvious. Having killed Caesar with his own, Lorenzo was plagued by overwhelming guilt. Revealing the Phantom Weasel's true identity would serve no purpose, but. If the weasel remained free, then she could take care of Lorenzo's loved ones. An excellent answer, though sadly a little dull. Is that... Well, don't let me bore you. If you change the topic to something more interesting, I'd be much obliged. In fact, there's one thing I'd really like to understand. Have targeted things that only have value to other people. Could you shed any light on that? Of course. After all, we're telling stories. If I had to guess, I'd say that the real weasel was a terrible childhood, left to fend for herself after her parents died young, betrayed, scorned. Mm. 
she'd scrap draw on, using twigs and dirt for lack of ink and pen. She'd sew ugly rag dolls from whatever scrap material she could use on. This was the only source of happiness in life. But it was all she needed, and she was content. Until the world decided even this was too good for her. Once again, she was betrayed. Everything was taken from her. She felt like life was a miry pit that dragged her down the more she struggled. At that tender age, she should have been happy. Instead, she and watched with envy as all good things in the world passed her by. This was a fate too cruel for anyone to bear. Her pain became a breeding ground for dark thoughts, thoughts which festered and grew into into her troubles. I detest the thoughts of others, its forms alike. I will rise and it will fill the void in my soul. That's some pretty heavy stuff. <laughs> Makes sense. Does this story satisfy you, Linny? Yes, it is quite to my tastes. Thank you for helping to clear up my confusion. Huh. That's... What drove you to... Because without that, this would have... Hey! I'd hoped that the Phantom Weasel would be consigned to history books by now. But it seems like someone still wasn't ready to let her finally be at peace. Linny. Or should I call you the Phantom Copycat now? You were the one who did that. But why? Very sharp, Phantom Weasel. Still as sharp as ever. Well, no need for me be coy about it, I was to clear Caesar's name. The most straightforward way to change the public's impression of Caesar was to force the weasel to show themselves. Uh, that's it? You had no other agenda? Of course we did. We made it quite clear in the letter, I believe. For you, that which you hold most dear, just as you did me ten years ago. Ten years ago? You mean Caesar's death? You met him? Wait. Oh, I get it. You were those two obnoxious kids. It's been so long. Now, I didn't recognize you. He taught you magic back then, didn't he? For, what, ten days or something? And you went to all this trouble. Why? Because you feel like you still owe him something? Remember all our debt. Ten years ago, Caesar's reputation was torn to shreds. Ten years ago, no one is anymore. But we did not forget. And so we came to find you. And what exactly did you take from me? I'm still standing, as you can see. Lorenzo has admitted to everything. I'm free. Free? <laughs> Do you really think so? Caesar once told me that even though the world is filled with lies and falsehood, we must find our own truth. I think that applies to you. Many forms. Session with nostalgic value, fervent hopes and dreams, and irreplaceable people. Life took many things. Terribly in the dead of night, stealing became your way of numbing the pain. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that for the last you've been living a rather uneventful life. Perhaps because you found something trying to fill the hole? Back to Lorenzo for a second. 
he murdered his own master, played along with your act, and took pains to make sure any suspicion would be directed towards him. But what did he have to gain from all that? He knew who you were and the things you'd done, and despite that, he was willing to give everything up for your sake. He's the reason that you haven't felt the compulsion to steal these years. Accomplices in murder, you're the only real friends each other has. So I think you know, deep down, that he is the only truth you have in your life. But that truth is gone now. And I guarantee you, you'll never see it again. <laughs> Your freedom will cost you dearly. From now on, you'll be all alone in a world full of lies and falsehoods. Barrett, you've still got a long life ahead of you, after all. One and all, the time has now come for the form his final act. I'm sure you're all wondering what he has planned for the grand finale. Well, wonder no more, for the answer is death defying high altitude escape. I'm sure you all remember the magician Caesar. This trick that led to his fatal fall after which he was dubbed the Phantom Weasel. But we have now learned that Caesar was wrongly accused, and that the real weasel now committed crimes. That's my cue to leave. Whew. I've been practicing this one for ages. I'm still a little nervous. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. People watching but you alone are my true witnesses. <laughs> Lenny, wait. You two hid a lot from Caesar. He went to his grave without ever knowing you were So what about... Or are you still the same as ever? You don't have to tell me if I did it. <laughs> One day, you'll end up exactly where I am today. Maybe then you'll finally understand. You like you. <laughs> so, uh, what are we, uh, doing now? Like Lenny said, when you're ready, let's head outside and watch the show. But what about Jenna? She'll figure out what's best for her soon enough. All right. Well, let's go and watch Lenny's fin. This trick's a pretty dangerous one, but he should be able to pull it off, right? Did you see that? One minute he was falling, and the next he turned into flowers. How could he possibly have done that? How mysterious. I didn't blink once. He just vanished right in front of my eyes. What a heart-stopping magic show. Caesar's name has finally been cleared, and Fontaine's new star magician, Linny, has fulfilled a wish on his behalf. Oh, I couldn't ask for a better grand finale. It will make a great headline for the Steambird tomorrow, even if I say so much. Looks like everyone really loves Linny's grand finale. Where'd he go? Oh, Lenny said he hot. But, um, where is he? Oh, you mean the one where Caesar's buried? This whole magic show kind of seemed like Lenny saying goodbye to Caesar. That's where he'd be afterward. All right. There. Lenny! There you are! Um, right. Paimon was scared to death when the chain broke. Paimon was sure something had gone wrong. Magic is a performance art. 
A magician has to get creative to keep the audience on tenterhooks. That's our job. So I tweak Caesar's original setup a little to keep it fresh. The thought of suddenly feeling weightless, seeing the sky and the ground spinning and spinning. I can't help but wonder what Caesar thought in those final moments. Did he regret taking Emma and Lorenzo on? Or... It was his own slip-up right until the end. You know, Paimon's been wanting to ask you about something ever since we were in Caesar's workshop. You learned from Caesar, didn't you? When was that? After I joined the House of the Hearth. To be honest, Lynette and I had an agenda when we approached him. I told you about my past before, remember? As a young boy, I survived by secretly learning magic from street performers. I'd watch their tricks and try to figure out how they were done. But I quickly realized that observation alone could only get me so far. What I saw was the polished final performance, but the rigorous training they put in behind the scenes remained invisible to me. I needed to learn how to improve my sleight of hand, hone my We were gifted. Without proper guidance from a professional magician, we quickly plateaued. So that's why you sought Caesar out? Yes. We figured there was no harm in asking, but it took us by surprise that he was so willing to teach us. In all, we only spent very good to us. By contrast, we hid so many things from him. For instance, when he asked why I wanted to learn magic, I answered, it's my passion. But in truth, there's already a lot more to the story by then. After being a for our magic talent than trade soon after, this was no longer me doing what I loved. Would a was how the lie escaped my lips even as I was hesitating over whether to tell him the truth. Trust is a beautiful thing. Sadly, I'd forgotten how to try it then. Jenny. Still about the way I feel? You really are a gentle soul, aren't you? But don't worry, I'm used to it now. From the mansions of the elite to the house of the hearth, Lies and selfishness have followed me and Lynette everywhere we go. After Caesar went to we were busy with our missions. The next we heard of him was that he'd fallen to his death, and was now declared to be the Phantom Weasel. That night, I remembered his smile. But as I lay there, I didn't know what to say to him. To keep secrets is to put up walls. The longer you keep them up, the less you let people in. Then, one day, you look around and realize you're in an empty auditorium after a show, full of seats people who left. That's the price we have to pay. You only realize how much someone completely. That's why I was so confident this would hurt you. Because... I felt it for myself. Yeah, cheer up, Linny. We've had to say our fair share of goodbyes during our journey. But whatever happens, Paimon always believes in what tomorrow brings. Delicious food, fun toys, and the traveler by my side. Paimon just needs to focus on things like this and all the unhappy stuff goes right out the window. You know, traveler, doesn't that kind of make you a Exactly. It's the same for me and Lynette. We are the truest thing each other has in the world, and nothing can replace it. Life has taken plenty from us like it did from Gemma. But at least it left us with each other. That's what gave us the strength to get through the darkest days. That's why the darkness never consumed me and why it never will. Maybe we live in the shadows. We remember every precious shines through. All right. Time to let this conversation. Think of the show. Were you happy with Easy. I just 
wishes we hadn't been so distracted with the Gemma situation. We spent Opera House just talking and pretty much missed the entire first half of the show. Um, Lenny, could you do just one more trick for us? Well, that's a bit of a tall order, I'm afraid. The show's just finished, so my sleeves are decidedly card-free right now. Surely you can think of something. The Lenny Paimon knows can do anything if he puts his mind to Oh, all right then. I'll give it a go, but only because it's you. Watch closely. I have a flower in my hand. You liar! There's nothing in your hand! I'm going along with this! Huh? My... Right! I could have sworn I brought one here with me. Okay, try this. Count down with me. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Now, have another look around. Maybe the flowers appeared somewhere else. Really? Let's see. Wow, there it is! Oh, this is a different flower from the last time, right? This one's called, um, oh yeah, a rainbow rose. But more importantly, Paimon has to know how the trick is done! Please, Lenny, pretty please! Well, if you want to learn magic, you'll have to start by addressing me as teacher. Ugh. Fine! Please, teacher, please! <sighs> Since you asked so nicely, I'll share one little tip with you. Namely, the student of magic cannot solely rely on others being prepared to reveal their secrets. You have to observe, think, and find the answers for yourself. Is that it? Ah, look at the time. We shouldn't linger here too long. Thanks again for coming to see my show. I bid you both good night. I look forward to seeing you again. <sighs> Shall we head back down to you? <laughs> Paimon can't wait to read the Steambird tomorrow. Paimon bets Linny and Caesar will be plastered all over it. Let's head to the Steambird office and see what we can find out. I'm very sorry, Charlotte, but my sister and I are quite busy today. I'm afraid we'll have to decline this interview. Oh, please, Linny, I'll only take a moment of your time, if you would be so kind. What's here? I spent all night writing my piece about the Phantom Weasel, and it was going to go to print this morning. But just as dawn broke, I suddenly received news that Caesar's fiancée, Gemma, had contacted the guards and confessed to having been the real Phantom Weasel all along. That was quick. <clears throat> hmm? Too late, bro. <laughs> that was quick, you say? Please, fill me in. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> My instincts did stray. You do have something to hide. Gemma turning herself to do with Linny's performance last night. Maybe watching my high-altitude escape trick reminded her of a better time with Caesar, and she could not the voice of her conscience. Huh. Okay, then. Wait, no. That's all it took for her to have a change of heart. How did it take her ten whole years? Um, well... Oh, I remember now. You and Gemma were nowhere to be found after the sh happened between you. Quick fire question! Where did you all go after the show? Oh, we were the first. Actually, mentioned it because Rainbow Rose is in his tricks. But <coughs> hmm. I don't recall ever having those from you myself. Is this supposed to mean that they're more important to you than your sister? Oh, I, I just, uh... What, uh... what now? 
Oh, did Paimon say something wrong again? Pretty awkward! Uh, seems like this interview wasn't meant to... Never mind. If my persistence, but when there's explosive to be found, I can't turn away. It's about Gemma has already made waves, and I'll stop at nothing to get to the bottom of it all. Apparently, one of the things she said to the guards was that her final wish is to see Lorenzo one last time. Ah, oh, there's clearly a web of complicated relationships there. Can't blame me for being curious. All right, I guess I'll leave you to continue the rest of your conversation in peace. Bye for now. Um, Lynette? I was just... Oh, thank goodness! You scared You and me both, Paimon. You and me both. At least it did the job, right? Please, take good care of that rainbow rose. I'd be really upset if you lost it. <laughs>